Manoj bhai, you are not audible. Yeah. So shall I start? Yes, Manoj bhai. Thank you. So good morning, all of you. Om Shanti once again. And uh, today is a special uh, day in the sense it's a Sunday session. We are sitting there to interact with each other. So it's good if I can request all of you to maybe open your video cameras if you're comfortable, no compulsion, no force. It's good to interact to live faces rather than speaking to rectangular black boxes in front, but it's totally up to you all, right? So today I think we are discussing, I don't know whether people know what we'll be discussing today. Any idea? You all can at least unmute and say, it's good to interact at least by voice. If not, I'll just go ahead if I'm not getting any responses. So uh, today we'll be speaking about Jiteji Marna. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Rakhi Ben had told me once that Apne uh, Shuru Kya Thana Ye. So somewhere once in the Murli when we read, we had discussed something about Jiteji Marna, which means basically it's the art of dying whilst being alive. Hmm, it's a beautiful word, Jiteji Marna. So if I want to start, I started with this song, which was about Brahma Baba. And the beautiful first paragraph, which was there, was about Deha me rehte hue, Deha teeth hona. And further, he said, Karam karte hue, Karma teeth hona. So let us start with this. What is this Deha teeth? Because it is very, very closely related to Jiteji Marna. You know, the basis of the foundation or the foundation of a Brahmin life is basically Marjiva Janam, we call, whereby it again comes down to knowing the art of how to die whilst being alive. And it's very deep. It's not about like dying in the broad sense, like Marjana. No, it's not like about that. It's like being in the body, but how to be actually detached from the body. And let us go in the depths of this. So the first thing which I feel we should know is Deha Teet. Because unless we become Deha Teet, we can't go into the other Ateets. You know, this word also is beautiful, Deha Ateet. Ateet means, Ateet you all know, in Hindi it means past. And Ateet also means to be um, sort of say detached from something or even to be far off from something. Ateet ho gaya, hamara past ho gaya wo. So Deha Teet is to be detached from this body or to be far away or away from the body in one way. So now, that is what we call the earth shariri sthiti, which we keep practicing, the stage, bodiless stage. But let us go in the depth of it and try to understand the subtleties of not the deha now. When we go further down, it is about the subtle sense organs which we have. And what we call also the subtle powers, the sukshma shaktiya, in which we basically have man buddhi sanskar, no doubt, but it is our three things which we all the time keep doing and that is the basis for our action. So it is sankalp, thought, word and action. That is vacha and then action is karam. So let's look at each of these in detail. So Baba says, these are all from the murlis, from some murlis I have picked it up and a few points I'm sharing with you. So the first thing is the thought process and this is very important we'll see that how uh, this affects us so much. And that is not in our control because that is the big uh, generator of waste which starts happening. And that is the foundation. We are not able to become karmati because we are not able to become sankalpati. That's the first thing. Whereby sankalpati, it means you have to be going away from your thoughts. So as all of you all know very well, you are online students of Baba, a few students who have become online students of Baba. Uh, we all would be knowing that everything is burns down to the first Shakti, which is Man. So Sankalpati means how can I become in one way away from this mind? So I have to, first thing, I have to start going down on the layers. The first thing is my fast thought pattern needs to start coming down, which is those stressful thoughts. And usme hai overthinking. You know, we overthink a lot. I'll give you examples. Like we are doing some seva and I am uh, doing some exercise, like I'm preparing a PPT. So there are many thoughts. People say, huh, you prepared this? Hai. 
but then uh, many people ask feedback do kya kare should we change it or should we not change it because this is okay for your self improvement if you do that's fine but there's a limit if you keep doing overthinking on whether this is right or not this is not right you can't become sankalpati then because your thinking will just go on and on and overthinking drains you out let me tell you it's very important that we don't overthink on anything why because thought is an energy and the more i keep thinking then i can never become stable it's it's a fact sometimes we feel oh these are thoughts for seva but why are there so many thoughts for seva why are these two big questions which i always have and baba says agar kyun kyu aayegi na ye questions ki to aapko kyu mein jana padega and these two basic questions kyun and kaise that means why and how you know we always feel in life whatever happens why me you can't say that now why me after being a brahman when you are being a jite ji marna you are having a mar jiva janam you just have to accept everything whatever is there in your life and mind well you know the drama is ati kalyankari it is always ever benevolent so nothing which is happening in your life is out of your context whatever is happening is perfectly happening according to your karmic accounts which you have with people either in your family or in your alokik parivar it's a brahman parivar so the first question which is why why this why why na it doesn't make me fly baba has said that in the murli so i have to stop up i am um, we can't hear you manoj bhai uh is it completely gone now it has come back yeah okay. i think uh, it was the power i mean it went off it came again yeah now it's fine so uh this if you keep doing this why why again all the time it will be very difficult to lead a marjiva life then i did i can't even think of going near towards jite ji marna because visualize a murda in front of you a murda means a dead body usko aap kitna bhi karo usko aap dhakka lagao will it say why mai ko dhakka kyun laga rahe ho no so therefore if you look at it from a spiritual connotation jite ji marna means this why has to stop because as i said it doesn't allow me to fly and second is how kaise to so baba simply says in hindi kaise kaise mat karo aise karo means it is like that it is fine jo bhi mere samne aa raha hai brahman or in my logic it's a paper for me because unka sanskar mere sath match nahi ho raha hai it's fine nahi ho raha hai match theek hai but mai bar bar why should i create this thought that why is this soul like that no this soul is like that i just have to accept and second kaise main kaam karu iske sath or other thoughts about seva baba kaise hoga ye this is called swarth ki seva you know on the field of service on the battlefield of being in service it's a battlefield <clears throat> <clears throat> when i create this thought i'm doing seva for whom i'm doing seva for baba right so why should i have this thought in my mind baba kaise hoga kitne log aayenge like abhi for example i'm with you all we are just 16 participants so have i got this thought in my mind are sirf 16 log hain 16 logon ke sath hi baat karni hai aur aapke pehle to there were just 8 or 9 so if i create this thought are why only 8 or 9 today वैसे तो 24 आते हैं so this is also like swarth hai na why am i thinking that why there are 8 why there are 16 someone has told me to do this seva i just have to do the seva right but if i feel there are less number the quantity is less probably what is that it is showing that i want i'm doing this seva for name and fame so that more people should know me so you know we have to go on these subtleties inside this question of why and how hindi mein kyun aur kaisa so baba singh abhi isse dur jao then only you can become jite ji marna and you see you start doing this i have started working out on this i divide my day into 24 hours hai aapko pata hai 12 24 hours ka ek din hota hai kehte hain aath pehar hai so whatever suits so i'm just giving you my example i take 3 hour 3 3 hours at one time so for example in the morning 4 to 7 is the time amrit vela starts and then other things of the morning morning daily chores and then your murli and all those 7 o'clock baj jata hai 
सो इट्स अ ब्यूटिफुल टाइम ज्यादा क्यों और कैसे नहीं आता है राइट सेवन टू टेन इट्स द टाइम वेन वी आर गेटिंग रेडी टू गो टू योर लॉकेट गो टू द हॉस्पिटल क्लिनिक वेर एवर एवरी वन हैज दर ओन रूटीन चेक दो थ्री आवर्स एम आई एबल टू अगेन एंड अगेन कीप सिंग वाई दिस पेशेंट इज लाइक दैट हाउ विल दिस हैपन blah blah wherever you are working so every 3 3 hours you keep doing this checking and see what is happening if you feel that in your life the how and why have started disappearing it's difficult to disappear right from the beginning but it will start coming down so if my why and how have started coming down then i'm really towards the um, journey of being uh, what you call jite ji mar so that's the first thing sankalpatit and again and again in murli senior brothers and sisters share even dadi janki used to say uh, say uh, asha didi always shares this and even gopi sister from uk the dadi used to tell dadi janki kyu itna sochte ho aapko bola gaya hai koi cheez karo sit before you start anything go to baba's room sit with baba for a while maybe a couple of minutes 5 minutes whatever and then go on your job do that seva why do you want to think me kaise karu kaise hoga no so that is the first stage because unless and until we become sankalpatit that is our thought process is not in our control we can't even think of becoming karmatit we'll go on to karmatit because all these three are very closely linked to each other so as i said we start with the thought move on to word and then go to the action so first is sankalpatit second is coming to the word vacha so vacha teet hona hai which means you have to start going now away from sound and baba says this very beautifully in all the hindi murlis sakar murlis van prast avastha which is again a beautiful hindi word van prast which means vani se prasthan karna prasthan means departure it reminds me of the platforms it's written over there prasthan kar rahi hai ye gaadi so same thing is that i have to now depart from this thing and sometimes i feel we are able to stop here but we have something which has with us the entire day which we use so much and that has now become a mode of are speaking so i'm sure all of you agree to what i had i my actually my attention went over there because there was an alarm which was going in that in the mobile phone so can i now stop uh i can't say stop using the smartphone because it's difficult even i can't stop because there are so many things which i have to do on the smartphone but can i make sure that i use it and it smartphone doesn't use me by which i mean i stop the abuse of the smartphone you know i see there are many souls i don't want to name anyone and i'm not speaking about the lokic world at all mind well i'm speaking about the lokic world here there are many souls who send messages they record voice messages they type down messages some souls are to such an extent they just keep on and on it's like a big big uh, message so sometimes i feel that though i'm not speaking from here but i'm speaking through my mobile with people in the sense not this it is messaging or voice messaging or texting whatever so now we so uh, you know so this is closely related to what we call digital detox many people practice this 5 days 7 days they just fully shut off from the smartphone and they don't want don't want to be in connection with anyone that's okay each to his own i have no problems about that but i find for me it's very difficult to do that because being a doctor and being related to a uh, profession where my phone has to be 24/7 on because i got emergency calls any time in the night as well and i have to attend to calls from the intensive care so i can't keep my smartphone off and obviously when i say phone everyone has a smartphone nowadays no one is in that age old phones of nokia so i know that i have to live with the mobile but should i be a master of the mobile or should the mobile start mastering me so this is the second one which prevents me for becoming jite ji marna because to such an extent that i am so bonded with my phone that i can't just live with that and then what will happen constantly mera yog to kabhi nahi lagega because if my whatsapp chat is all the time i'm chatting with people on whatsapp and such big big chats and such big big voice messages then my intellect is getting connected to them all the time and therefore when i sit for yoga any time either in the morning amrit vela or in the nimasham 6:30 i 
I just get connected to those souls because constantly that's going on inside. So I need to apply an Ankush. Ankush means I really have to apply a full stop here on the usage of smartphone and each to his own. I'm not advising you how to do a digital detox, but I have to keep doing it myself. I should know what are my priorities and what accordingly I have to adjust in my lifestyle. So that's the other thing which I felt, you know, these smartphones, uh, all the technology, smartphone is just one of them. There are many other things which we are using now. For example, I'm sitting with you on the Zoom and technology is helping me. Uh, science ke sadhan hai, no doubt, right? But agar mera bar bar yehi hai ki mein yog bhi kar raha hoon. I want to do yoga, but 6.30 to 7.30, I want some music to go on. I want some commentary to go on. Then I'm totally dependent. My sadhana is totally dependent on this sadhana. And then for some reason, if the power is not there, I'm not able to connect online, then my state of mind becomes up and down. So this is another way how we are born to technology. So there are many different ways of technology affecting us. If you go to the kitchen, you know, it's simple things. I've experienced that because I do cooking. Uh, the day I want to uh, maybe say grind a chutney or something, that very time the power goes off. And what is my state of mind then? If I feel, oh my God, Baba ke liye chutney banani thi, khud ke liye bhi nahi, Baba aapke Thursday ke liye bhoog. And you know, I live in an area, Thursday is a time where electricity shuts off here. This is an industrial area and Thursday is a holiday. So I need to now see that the mixer went off early morning. I was wanting to make chutney, grind the chutney. And what is happening to my state of mind? Can I be Jiteji Marna then? So see, uh, we are all in the age of science where we are totally dependent on all these gadgets, starting from the mixer grinder and going up to many other flamboyant things in life which we use. But do I have an option if I'm not having that? If I'm not able to grind the chutney for Baba, can I just remember Baba? My heart say, thoda kut -kut karke, aapko thoda bhog lagata. Is that okay for you, Baba? What do you feel Baba will say? Baba will say, Kyu nahi? why not? Bache? Because you have to be stable mind me yad karke chutney banai hai. To apne bilkul hi yad me ki unlike aap grinder mixer me karte or apka man fast hota. At least disturb to nahi hue na. So now, therefore, we have to see that how we can make our life jite ji marna. So this second is vachati, trying to go away from the sound and also the sound of all these gadgets which we use. And the third, which is, I think it starts from thoughts, words, and then goes to action, which is the beautiful word karmatit. That was the third a thing which was mentioned in the song as well, Brahma Baba ki tarah hamari life kyu nahi ho pa rahi hai? Because Brahma Baba practiced this. He started with the practice of from Deha Teet, which also was Sankalpa Teet, Vacha Teet, and then finally Karma Teet. And again, Karma Teet. So as we were discussing, what is this Atit? Atit doesn't mean you have to stop doing actions or you have to go far away from actions. No, on the contrary, you do more of action. But your stage is such a flying stage. There is no why, why, and there is no how, how. And whatever you do, it becomes a, a what you call a fruitful action. And karmatit literally means that I am not affected by that action. Second, I don't think a lot about that action. I, I seva, someone has told me to do, I remember Baba and just do it. I don't think about the consequence. Why should I think about the consequence? I'm doing this service for whom? A sister has told me, Nimit sister has told me, someone has told me to do this seva. They have told me as a seva, let me just do it. What is the consequence? How many attend? How many come? How many don't come? That is not my lookout because that is their account with Baba. Kitne log jurte hai Baba ke saath, wo Baba ka unke saath account hai. to instrument ho I just have to do. Third thing, no swarth in seva, which I covered that before, but it again comes. Karma teeth avastha tab tak nahi hogi, jab tak seva mein koi bhot sukshma swarth hai andar. And you know, this is very, very subtle. It is not about the very uh, gross forms of uh, naam man shan. That is too gross. That my name should be there. I should be famous. That is too gross. Subtle things inside, like... Um, 
uh, it reminds me of Malik, Malik and Balak. Like again, someone has asked me to do a seva and they have asked me to do it this way. They have given me instructions, but then Mary and the Sankal Parai because uh, so you know people will say this is not swartha selfishness this is just my thought process going that i should be doing like that and which is in conflict with the thought process which i have been given from someone so if there is a conflict between my thought process and the thought process given to me from the sister what do you feel will be the energy of the service it won't be good so i just have to stop my thought process they have given me the job. I can't be a Malik here. I have to be a Balak here to do this Seva. So we need to know how to strike this very subtle balance of Malik and Balak, master and child. So as a child, I just have to do this Seva. No thought process of mine going inside that Mujhe. Ye karna tha na. Jaise bola hai, main thoda change karke dekhu na. Why do I have this thought that I want to change that thing? That is swarth. That is something very, very subtle. And other forms of swarth, you know, for Nam, Manshan, that too, you know very well others. So we have to start going from this. Then only we become true karmati. And this is what is called Jiteji Manna, which is like I accept everything, whatever is coming, Baba. Seva Mutse Karai. I was expecting an audience of 50 to come for my talk. Hardly five came. Uh, if I'm having this thought, oh God, only five have come. You know, it's, uh, it is why am I sort of racing my brain onto that? Why am I breaking my head on that? Which shows that there is inside again a little bit of selfishness. So I need to understand this, that I need to be away from these thoughts and then only there'll be true success in service. Right? And here it reminds me of another Baba's Murli that we all say Hame Bab Saman Bannai, right? Now, when I say Bab Saman, I'm referring to Shiv Baba in corporeal. So, you know, there are three basic things which are said in his, uh, what you call, in his praise, in Baba's praise, Shiv Baba's praise. It is a, uh, starts with uh, a Sochta, a Bhokta, and a Karta. It is very closely related to Sankalpati, Dvachatit, and Karmatit and also very closely related to Marjiva. You know, Shiv Baba is at a biggest advantage because he's always incorporeal. He doesn't take a body like all of us do. Um, and we come in this cycle of birth and death and we have to take these bodies. I can never say that I, the soul, should not take the body. And if I want to think like that, then I just have to be in the soul world all the time. Then I can never become a Devta. Then I'll be that one which starts coming from the copper age. So we are those souls, we always have to come in contact with matter. And the moment I come into the five elements, I start getting influenced by the five elements. So when I get influenced by five elements, what does it exactly mean? Like uh, there is a big uh, definition of influence, you know, prabhavit hona. So if you look at your... Uh, uh, your Kalyugi Sharir, uh, rather I must say Sangam Yogi now, Confluence Age. Now also while I'm sitting with, with in front of you, I'm speaking to you, it's the summer season. And uh, I'm getting affected. If it is very warm, I'll start dabbing myself and then I'll maybe put the air conditioning on. So I'm getting affected by the element which is around me, the air element. Same thing is water element. If I start feeling thirsty, while speaking to you, my mouth becomes dry. I'm getting affected. And we say this is natural. Yes, obviously this is natural because if I'm thirsty, if my mouth is dry, I will go and drink water. So these are all very natural biological processes, we say. And we have to experience those because we are the souls who have taken these bodies. Baba, is, an, is it an advantage? He doesn't have to do that. And it reminds me of a good thing here that uh, Dadi Gulzar's body was taken it was the chariot for so many years, right? And Shiv Baba used to come and sit for 15, 16 hours, who is incorporeal, but it is finally Dadi's finite body. Dadi used to sit in that body, and then after that, Dadi used to be like, oh, a little bit of pain in the body. So uh, why I'm saying this is because we have to be this first thing, which Baba's title is, a sochta, a bhokta, and a karta. Actually, uh, 
it reminds me that I was supposed to speak to you all. I'll be having a little bit of time for that. You know, it reminds me here of all these beautiful souls, Adi Ratan Atmai. Uh, let me tell you who are these Adi Ratan. They are those souls of the advanced party. All of these beautiful souls who have done so much of intense effort, Tivra Purshat, that Baba has given them the title that you are the advanced party. Means they've finished their effort and even if they leave this body, the next body would not be a BK life. They have already done their effort and then they are in some other part, in some other body, but they have been BK in the previous birth. So May is the month and today is 16th May. So there are three souls who have left this body, uh, the mortal coil. It was first of all is Jagdish Bhai who left on 12th May 2020, uh, 2001. So it's exactly 20 years. And he was such a serviceable soul. Baba used to say, Mera bhot agya kari bachcha hai. It reminds me of him because it's just four days he's passed. And uh, why it reminds me? Because he didn't, uh, he has written all the literature, all the books of the Brahma Kumari's university. I'm sure all of you know about that. But if you don't know, it's news for you. Whatever book you pick up, you read, it is written by him. And he was the number one soul. Why? He was also called uh, Ganesh by Baba. And also he was called Sanjay. So Ganesh means Buddhi ka Devta. Uh, a soul who has got such a broad intellect and who can just write on and on. So why Jagdish Bhai I am remembering suddenly here is because he never uh, put his thought process. Whatever Baba said, he'll just go and do. It reminds me why he went so fast and why Baba gave him this title. It starts here. I'll just share this small story with you. Uh, there were those three brothers, including him. They were given this job of writing down something. And Brahma Baba told them, Bache, ye kaam karke kal mujhe de dena. Something it was. I don't know what exactly it was, but something they had to write. Gave a small write-up, a one-page write-up. And Baba told them uh, maybe in the evening, late evening, after the night class, 8, 8.30. And what happened? Suddenly the power went off. So there was no light in Pandav Bhavan at all that time then. So those two brothers said, Are acha bahana mil gaya. Kya bahana mil gaya? Nahi karna padega, right? Kyu kare? Because light bande kaise likhenge. But look at Jagdish Bhai. What he did, he went in the, the street light was on. He went outside a few meters. He walked and it was very cold. It was a chilly night. It was the month of winter months. So it was a chilly night, no light, but he went onto the street light underneath that he sat he took a pen and paper it was very dim light but he started writing whatever brahma baba had said and then you know it was not that he was egoistic that he's doing this and he wanted to show off that he is doing it others are not no it was absolutely that niswarth uh, selflessness attitude inside which he did with because he felt who has told me it is not brahma baba who said who said this Almighty authority has said through Brahma Baba. So he said, it is my job to do it. And then he did it. And the next day morning, uh, these other two brothers, they were a bit like, oh, uh, Patani, uh, Brahma Baba will ask or not in the Murli. So the Murli went off very well. No one was asked. And so they were rejoicing inside. And and anyway, he didn't have all those thoughts. Jagdish Bhai was fine. He was enjoying the Murli. And then once the Murli was over, in the Murli, there was no mention about that. Immediately the Murli was over and Baba asked those three brothers. He told them, Bache, kya hua us baat ka? Hua ki nahi ho? So wo, the other two brothers immediately popped up first. And they said, Baba, kaise kare? Aapko pata hai light nahi thi. All those excuses. Hmm, this is bahane bazi, which Baba doesn't like. Both Brahma Baba and Shiv Baba. It, it, it reflects your alas. It reflects your uh, laziness. So if there is carelessness, Alvela Pan Baba didn't like that. So he said, okay, bache, no problem. And then uh, I think they only, if I'm not mistaken, they only said, Baba is Jagdish Bhai ne likha hai. Because uh, Jake Karratha. So they only said that, and Jagdish Bhai very humbly showed that. And then from that day onwards, Baba told Ye Bacha, what Agya Kari hai, ye number one Jayaga Bacha. And he was given that Vardhan from Baba that you will be the one who will be writing, you, writing the literature for the Yagya, and you'll be the spokesperson. And he became the spokesperson because it was who he represent, who represented the entire Brahma Kumari's organization at all these big events.
and it was his brain child he came up with this uh, uh, thought of having different wings now we have 19 wings he, he was the one who proposed because baba in the murli said that professions ki seva karo you know you are reading those murlis of 93 now 93 was celebrated as avyakt varsh the year of being avyakt so that time baba you know each and every when baba meets the groups every uh, group meeting is like a big murli in itself i'm sure you know we have experienced that from 92 murlis the murlis are so big and baba says that now do something for each and every profession do something for these doctors for these engineers for these advocates and then jagdish bhai got this very beautiful inspiration from baba that we should do something called wings and these wings came into being and the service started accordingly so this is the way he was surrendered and reminds me one more instance i want to share that because it will be incomplete uh, on jagdish bhai's part if i don't say that uh, once again baba told him that aap ek lekh likh ke lao why don't you do a write up for some magazine he wanted and he did a beautiful job he did it and then uh, but what he did jagdish bhai uh, he was quite confident about his write ups and about his thought process but he said uh, he was also very uh, kind and wanted to give regard to the teacher there the bk teacher who was the in charge of the center uh, so he showed it to one of the sisters over there the senior sisters so she gave a little bit of correction do this do that and then she said why don't we show it to this other sister also so he said okay ha ji unka ha ji ka part bahut pakka tha then he showed it to another sister that another sister said okay good uh, you have come to me i feel this should be slightly different in the write up so okay she said ha ji fine and then she said hamari ek choti behan bhi hai why don't we show it to her let us take a little bit from her as well and then choti behan ne bhi apna kuch rai sala diya and then little bit of change so aise thoda khichdi ho gaya what original he had written was a little bit when i say one person will do a little bit modification by the time it comes to the third or fourth person <clears throat> the original originality goes away i know <clears throat> i you and i hope you are understanding what i'm saying so then when he went to brahma baba with these modifications and all he said bacche aapko kisne bola itna puchne ko abhi baba aapko vardan deta hai ki aap jo bhi likhoge आपको किससे करेक्शन नहीं कराना है बिकॉज आपकी बुद्धि इतनी क्लियर है आपका जो कनेक्शन है बाबा के साथ बुद्धि का कनेक्शन इतना क्लियर है कि आपको मेरी भी जरूरत नहीं है करेक्शन कराने की ब्रह्मा बाबा क्या कह रहा है बिकॉज आपको शिव बाबा ने वरदान दिया है so here we go and knows no wonder he was called ganesh and also he was called sanjay you know sanjay in the mahabharat is uh, shown to be a soul who uh, guides and who tells everything about what is happening in the battlefield to dhritarashtra so dhritarashtra is basically a soul who is what dhrit dhrit means absolutely uh, uh, vicious and absolutely unko dikhaya hai ki aankhein bhi nahi he is blind so how is he blind so it's basically kalyugi souls who are so we were also in that stage before that this eye was closed and we didn't know our actions were totally vicious so we were like dhritarashtra and sanjay was the person who was showing who was telling him what is happening in the battlefield of mahabharat that is shown in the path of devotion right so even jagdish bhai's books because his intellect is so clear and his writings are so perfect when you read those books particularly if you read the english book the eternal world drama so being so clear in his writings so baba said all your books will be a guiding force for all these souls who are coming and therefore it is amazing that how he has served all the professionals and all the professionals were really influenced by his write up so this is the beautiful soul we have in may um, you know every month we have many uh, souls who have left the mortal coils and have become part of the advance party march was one of the month where it was many of our of late dadis also 8 9 in may it also was ishu dadi you all know it was i think 6th may if i'm not mistaken and 8th may is kamal sundari dadi which was also a beautiful devta dadi if you want to hear her experiences sometimes we can discuss that so uh, it reminds me that uh, he was a perfect a sochta he didn't think baba has said i have to do but a sochta me doesn't mean i don't have to apply my brains i have to be like totally uh, brainless no a sochta means i do the job baba has told me to do let my connection be clear and then i don't have any thought process i don't need correction from anyone then 
okay we have to strike a balance here we can't be so egoistic if someone is giving us a feedback we have to take it but then again fully surrender it to baba and see how is happening second is herb hokta i want to tell you a little bit in detail about herb hokta how all these dadis being so sick being so diseased <clears throat> having cancer having <clears throat> terminal stage illnesses having parkinsonism whatever tell all the diseases they have the diabetes all the dadis have diabetes in one way i mean i'm not looking down upon them but i'm just saying their bodies are so ill but when you look at their faces the soul power is much more higher than the power of the body because they are all the time so light they don't even think that humko ye bimari hai brahma baba also just for your information people who don't know he also had diabetes but he never had those complications of diabetes which we see kidney kharab ho gayi aankhein kharab ho gayi ulcers ho rahe kyun because soul power zyada thi na and many people in a humorous way i am just saying this try to compare brahma baba ha brahma baba ko bhi diabetes thi humko bhi hai i mean i'm sure it's not a good way to compare your illnesses with someone but what i'm trying to say here is they were abhokta kabhi bhi karam bhog unka dikhai nahi diya because unka karam yog was so strong they were really they overpowered their illnesses you just even can't think that they had that illness dadi janki she had problems with gastritis her stomach was always creating problems she had problems with lungs she had chronic asthma she used to cough you know that even brahma baba used to cough he had little bit of cough as well but fine hai na cough hai body ko body ko hai na why should i get affected so much so that is called herb hokta that's the third thing that come what may i have not to be influenced by my bodily illnesses because the soul power is much more higher than that and the third one which i said first i started with a sochta a bhokta and a karta a karta closely relates to what we have started this talk we started with sankalpa teet vacha teet and going to karma teet so a karta means karma it very similar uh, stages whereby i do something but i forget that i have done it in such a beautiful way to be in yoga i do some seva but i do it in the thought process that baba karan karavan har is getting it done from me so i don't even get this thought that i am doing it in such a beautiful stage of yoga then can i complain that baba aap se yoga nahi lagta hai this complaint will never come because i am doing everything not even thinking that i am doing this and when we reach this this stage and it's not that we'll be reaching this stage at the end no we can just start it right from now it is just one thought away so once we start going in this thought process then you see how fast you become karmatit by which i mean that jite ji marna will become very very easy so i think it's six tens so just me let me just now wind up and summarize what we have discussed so far people have joined a bit late as well so just for the benefit of all so today we were discussing that in english if i can say uh, the art of uh, dying whilst being alive so which is all these we had discussed that let us try to stop our overthinking the stress to bahut dur ki baat hai now stress to we can't have as brahmins but the sometimes we have stress of seva so that also seva cannot be a stress for me it's impossible service is something beautiful it gives me a beautiful feeling how can it be stressful so stop your overthinking start applying full stops no why only fly why why ke bajaye fly and no how kaise kaise nahi only aise bas karna hai so this will make you sankalpa teet then you can gradually go into the vacha teet stage whereby at least this should stop and also your mobile phone smartphone messaging should stop because that will reflect your inner uh, strength that are you able to control that your sense organ here is controlled but inside ka sense organ can you control that by stopping the mobile chats and then you go on to the third which is karma teet we discuss that what is the detail karma teet and then lastly uh, we, we spoke a bit about jagdish bhai beautiful a uh, lot of points to share about him don't have time to do that now and then we went into how he was an embodiment of a sochta a bhokta and a karta so here we go and when once we start doing these then it becomes very easy then we don't have to create an effort of being jite ji marna so i hope this jite ji marna it's quite a deep thing 
and it's closely related to your deha titsthiti which all the souls brahma baba mama pass through and then finally our karmatit which karmatit is a big topic in itself there are many murlis which baba has mentioned on karmatit but it's finally i must say it's the stage of perfection is a perfect stage a vyak stage farishta stage whatever you want to call it where I, where all of us have to reach as brahmins right thank you so much for bearing with me om shanti and thank you for a patient listening yeah rakhi ben bolo um we can take one minute silence and then uh, we can definitely come back with questions if we have anything around the session that manoj bhai has taken Uh, brother you can unmute kalpesh bhai and ask ya yeah. <clears throat> om shanti and uh, i first of all uh, thank you very much manoj bhai and uh, whenever your session is there and i uh, some somehow i very love this uh, your session uh, i am very happy and at the uh, at 6 o'clock i have another meeting but i didn't left i just disconnected with you and uh, you told that uh, miss uh, to open this and that, that's to to open the video to miss to interaction and the vibration what you are getting uh, you are giving that uh, we can connect and uh, you, you told that uh, what happens to if if uh, 12 people are there but if these are not 12 people these are uh, these are 12000 people One lakh people, crore people. This is going to uh, their message going to in in near near future. Uh, that I like very much. Yes, sir. One 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 thank you thank you that's what uh, you know uh, it reminds me what you said uh, distinctly reminds me of this because there was a program which we were conducting and then uh, i told that sister that uh, there are five people can we start she said thoda aane do na 10 15 20 aane do 50 ko bulaye i said uh, why why do you feel that i shouldn't start for five or six so she said uh, thoda sa aane do na thoda hall bharne do so i told her i mean not i mean i told her in the sense that uh, i am something great i didn't i don't mean it that way i told her that uh, you know these people have uh, taken out their time and they have come on time uh, say 5 o'clock we were supposed to start and they were there quarter to 5 fine quarter to 5 i am not starting but at 5 chalo 5 bhi nahi 5 5 i should start because their time is important 
you know what happens in this big race in seva i have seen this a lot that we wait for other people to come and in this all this big uh, jhol i must say it's really a big whirlpool in this we forget that those people who have already come we are wasting their precious time why they are not precious to us on the contrary i must say the person who has come first and even if it is one person we should start the program we means i must just i'm just saying for the, some particular seva so as you rightly said that each soul is highly powerful and even if there is one soul i have to do the program so it is like i have to start on time and you know that is also a very good quality being disciplined as a brahman it will help me becoming karmatit very fast because if i am uh, just waiting all the time for people to join more people to join it's uh, it's actually a sanskar of carelessness i feel that okay harpreet sister or brother uh, sorry it's yeah a this, it's yeah. a lady yeah okay <laughs> om Good. shanti om shanti so maybe uh, uh, firstly uh, thank you very much for your very enlightening uh, talk and i thoroughly enjoyed especially listening to these stories uh, i won't call them stories they are real life uh, situations but many of us like who have come into gyan we read the murli we listen to everything but we may not know like uh, this you know about jagdish bhai about this and that we may not know that much so thank you for sharing that my question to you was actually in a more direct form because you also said you are a doctor so i'm very impressed that in a in a worldly sense you're doing your duties as well as you're totally connected to baba so i wanted to uh, ask you in your experience what is the way that you could connect both and be successful in both that means you could lead a lokic life and a lokic life very successfully in your own experience okay thank you sister i think uh, the answer is in the question itself by which i mean you know uh, i feel the more you are in any lokic profession you need baba more because uh, when you are in a profession where it's very demanding whereby for example if you have taken my professional let me speak from myself i came into touch with brahma kumaris i didn't know what brahma kumaris were but once i on the television i heard sister shivani and then my journey has started so uh, you know what i feel is the greatest thing about brahma kumaris and getting connected to baba is this is the only organization which is obviously uh, directly run by baba though there are all the sisters who are the sister in charge and they are all the instruments with due respect to them no doubt about that but it is who is running this organization none of the dadis or dadas is running even dadi janki and all these other administrative heads in the past have mentioned so i realize that this is the only place where i got that exact knowledge of who am i and who is god and when i develop this beautiful relationship that i always keep saying baba 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 which i never i never even knew what who god is before i was associated with a different spiritual organization i don't want to name it but there also i felt it was all the path of devotion though they also claim that yes we give the knowledge of atma and parmatma but the way the exact knowledge and more important than the knowledge is the experience the experience jo anubhav hota hai yahan pe atmik sthiti ka and also who is that parmatma how to get connected so those two things made me feel that this knowledge on the contrary is for lokic people and people like me uh, being in a, i'm in an advantage baba says double doctor so me to be double doctor ho gaya i know about the body also and i know about myself also and it made a 360 degree change in my life obviously i am not a person who wakes up very late and i was a vegetarian from the beginning itself but uh, whatever this we have the daily disciplines of a bk life that really makes your life very easy and i find that some many people tell me oh you are doctors you are very busy i really tell them no we are not busy baba has said us you are all easy because creating this thought that i am busy is a damaging thought so when i create this thought i am easy inside things really go in a different direction because i give them that beautiful energy that's the law of attraction whatever i think inside or i speak that attracts accordingly so that's what i feel on the contrary all the lokic professions the more busier you are the more spiritual you should be that's what i feel 
<laughs> hope that answers your question sister no thank you thank you brother in fact because i am also in a very professional life that i can relate exactly to what you're saying thank you so much om shanti and one more thing yeah sometimes then we get uh, that subtle pride inside yeah dekho hum to logic bhi sambhal rahe hain logic bhi sambhal rahe hain no we have to respect in the sense i have total respect for all the surrendered sisters why because they have their own challenges as we have our challenges in the professional world they have their own challenges in that small center where they are <laughs> and not even small i must say but i must say that they meet so many other sisters wahan pe there is sanskar clash and all those things which happen because finally we are dealing with human beings we all of us are at a human human level we have clash of sanskars we have it in the logic world they have it in the logic world so with due respect to them also they are also equally challenged in that way and then they are also doing a fantastic job because wearing a white sari constantly and uh, the white sari is just basically something which i'm saying about the physical sense but giving your life to baba and leading such a life trying to completely change your clothes and all that forever it's not an easy job to do like obviously i'm sitting here with you wearing this white when i go to the job i can't be wearing this white all the time and baba says on the contrary that aap pravritti male aap color kapdo mein jao taki aap unke jaise hi logo kuch alag nahi logo but then when you start speaking then they realize what is the difference so at, you know our main job as lokik people is to get all those souls attract them with our spirituality and then get them to the center bali ka bakra bana ke unko leke aaye and then just cut them <laughs> a beautiful way you know what i'm saying cutting yes yes <laughs> om shanti thank you um, om shanti i was listening to both of your conversations manoj bhai and it it uh, you know it, it goes down to that day when you and me were speaking about there are two different professions uh, where precision is very much important and time is very much important and both you and harpreet sister like you come from the background of medicine and harpreet sister uh, you know heads one of the airline company you know where we spoke about how pilot and a doctor needs to be very very clear at the at the moment what's happening around so you know i would invite harpreet sister to share her experience if she can share as to how this gyan had supported her to go ahead in her profession right now okay sure yeah um, um actually i'll keep it short uh, but i feel my spirituality and interest was always there from childhood but with baba's gyan what has happened is that the knowledge and the empowerment that i get now is so strong and i totally relate to um, uh, sorry i forgot the name dr manoj just spoke ha uh, manoj bhai uh, manoj bhai uh, i totally relate because uh, you can't say i'm busy it it is easy and in fact when i got a sankalp from baba that you know uh, with covid people are getting very scared and you know you are a strong person as by personality also i got this kind of thought now uh, use it to help others and uh, immediately i said okay let's do meditation the thought came and from 2nd may onwards i've been doing 4:30 to 5 we opened a zoom channel and there are a lot of employees and others we're just doing meditation together even if they don't know about baba they don't believe and i'm not using only baba's name just so that everybody is universally accepting whichever energy they follow because i believe god is only one there are only paths to reach the same point so i have and i've taken baba's permission to do that because whenever a doubt comes i liked your statement which you said earlier for me if baba is running everything if i have a doubt why should i go to an intermediary i just go into a trance i talk to baba i get the answer and i do exactly what he says because sometimes there can be dilution in understanding in what we are trying to do and at work i keep uh, baba's uh, this uh, same picture of the light i have put it in my office so talking about the work connection and uh, throughout i think it's how you give the energy like uh, i'm not a ceo anymore i'm i'm just like you i'm another soul and my door is open i said walk in any time let's work as a team and i think it's really influenced my style of working i'm more participative i know i'm just like a trustee i'm in a holding a temporary position and that's it so i cannot be attached to that chair i should be ready that it goes today now and it has no impact on me and this is the strength i've got from baba now i really don't care and you ex- i totally related to you saying that there were only five people or six people when i start the meditation at 4:30 i just start 
I don't even watch whether one person has joined or two people have joined. 3.45, wake up, do my own meditation before, then 4.30 to 5, then do my, again, some physical exercise because I've realized, I want to share since you're a doctor, I had a mitral valve prolapse problem from the last many years. And with this COVID, the uh, oxygen level had come down slightly, but I was actually not having any symptoms. So they did my CT scan and all that. I just prayed, focused on Baba, and I said, you know, I should be okay. And when they did the CT scan, they said, this is fine, but why don't you also do a 2D echo because it could be related to the heart. And I had an MVP, so I told them about that. And do you, can you believe it? Just last week, they've done the test for me. They say it's sorted out on its own. There is no MVP anymore. And I got Baba's message telling me that, you know, it is also important to use your physical body as an example to show that with the soul power, you can correct minor things and you can move on with the same energy. And I've written it in my diary. Today, Rakhi Ben has just asked me, first time I'm sharing it on a public platform, to be very frank. So I can see Baba's energy working in the body, Baba's energy working in the office. And I have time for everything. I just sleep four or five hours and I just don't get tired. I'm just always in a blissful state. My only, I have some challenges. I sometimes get a little distracted. I immediately tell myself, no, correct yourself. And I go back. So I've not reached the stage of 100%, obviously. I'm on the journey. But I think I've progressed. I've really progressed. I can feel that. I can feel that energy. And when I listen to people like you, I get more uh, confident that we can all progress. You know, Because I know that everyone is doing such great things and Baba is making all of us do it. So it really feels great. And the people who are listening to the meditation in the morning, they are not even Brahma Kumaris. You know, they are doing all the things. And I've just mixed up the Brahma Kumari style of meditation with what suits them without diluting the impact. It's just to get them the energy because finally it's just a different way of expression. That's the way Baba has clarified it to me. In fact, he even made a statement. He said, don't become bookish see the spirit behind it so you don't have to use only those words and those things because maybe my my journey is different so i'm here to integrate the different people and get them onto the same point even if they are following different religions or different whatever that's the way i look at it that's my direction from baba so i'm trying to follow it thank you so much i'm sorry for taking the time of the speaker raki ben i would like to give it back to the main uh, speaker uh, let's yes. go and it is <laughs> Good to realize that uh, everyone's journey is so different. Yes. I can't, I can't wear your shoes. Neither can you share my shoes. I can't absolutely. share the shoes of uh, yes. Samarpit's sister. Neither can she do for me. So it's absolutely our journeys are beautiful, and the more we enjoy our journey, the more we'll enjoy with other people as well. So I think you're absolutely right. What you said, perfect. Yes. Thank you so much for this wonderful sharing and journey and experience sharing with. The whole, uh, the whole um, you know, the different souls that we're sitting here. One last question uh, to you, Manoj Bhai. Uh, how can one look at this stage of being a sochta? Baki sab to fir bhi baat ki baat hai, but how can one go off thoughts? How do one look at that? I was expecting this question. Good you asked, because that's the first question people ask. Because we are the souls, man buddhi sanskar hai, so man to sochega. So when we say asochta means you're not completely off thoughts, then you're definitely becoming very bizarre and berserk. You're not, you're becoming an insane person. I didn't mean that. It's basically that you create a thought and let that thought be a determined thought. I mean, it's a bit difficult when I say that because nowadays we are dwindling with many other things in life. So determination is a bit difficult. But I create one single thought connected to Baba. Let me practice determination on that, be determined on that thought, and then come into action. And mind well, when I create this determined thought, then there are no ifs and buts. Then I can't think, aise hoga ki nahi hoga, kyun aise hoga? So I don't go in that question marks and all that. And I don't even go in wonderstruck, that exclamation mark signal. Are aise kyun kiya, maine aisa nahi karta to achha hota. So when we say a such thought, it means creating a nice, beautiful, powerful thought, work on it with determination and finally implement it. I think that is it. It's not a such thought in that sense. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. We can take one last question if anybody has. 
Yaum Shanti, very good morning. My question is like, uh, I'm also reading Jagdish Bhaiji's book and uh, his book uh, messages. What I came to know, one thing he neglected his physical aspect. And I was there when he left his bottles. So that time only probably eight months back I had come. So Baba said, uh, Bacha didn't look after his health. And whatever I came to know, like may, you didn't tell me other two souls who uh, left mortals. So uh, May month, uh, my, you know, goes for uh, dedication to reading all about what Bhaiji does. So I was undergoing uh, what he got up till now from reading, what he emphasized on constant yoga, akhand yoga and prachan yoga towards. So what he said, ki, like we all are the yogis, sahaj yogis, but uh, full day we can't sit. That's not Raju. You have to be in actions. So what he said, uh, fire is on in the morning. Make it sure it doesn't dim down. Uh, to use it various somanas or drills and whatever. But towards the end, yes, it should go towards that volcanic stage. So all efforts should be for us. Uh, somewhere, Baba ko idhar se pakro, udhar se pakro. You should be always somehow... Uh, be in the influence of that ultimate energy of Baba. But uh, he neglected his, uh, you know, health. That's what Baba wasn't happy. He made him stay there for many days, pampered him. But what's learning for me, what I feel, let's look after our physical aspect also. And uh, constant Nirantar yoga should reach volcanic stage. Om Shanti. And I'm grateful, uh, brother, you shared such wonderful points of Jagdish Bhai. It gave me immense, uh, immense satisfaction. Thank you. And who all left mortals? You could please share. Uh, thanks, sister. So we will be, you know, having separate session with Manoj Bhai as well. We will invite him for the next session. Like uh, whoever, like our dadis and all the respected brothers. So we have nice treasure of experience with Manoj Bhai. So we will hear from him soon. Thank you. Manoj Bhai, are you there? He seems to be on mute here. Yeah. yeah, I'm very much there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were on mute. So can we go ahead and take a yeah, small so meditation? A little bit. So I think it's uh, 6.34. So we'll just do another maybe seven to eight minutes. I hope uh, we have that much time. So I'll share the screen. So what we'll do in the meditation today is what we spoke about. We'll try to be in the experience of that, whereby we try to go away from this body, Dehati, experience that stage of being a Shariri, bodiless stage. And, I mean, and go in the depth of that bodiless and experience that beautiful, the depth of that the beauty, I must say. So I'll just share the screen. Sit back straight, relaxed. Take a deep breath in and out. Relax the body. Relax. Visualize yourself as this beautiful conscient being of light. This is a tiny star doing a wonderful job in the body. Taking care of the body day to night. Visualize yourself as this energy and today 
I won't be giving you a lot of commentary. Just, just experience this stage of being detached from the body. Deha se ati, deha ati. I am separate, body is separate. Just be it. and enjoy it. same time when I am detached from this body I need to attach somewhere and the best place to attach is supreme energy so connect to that source beautiful energy Baba experience all the goodness from me. Thank you so much, all of you. Any closing comments, Rakhi sister? Thank you so much, Manoj Pai, for this wonderful session. And um, I'm sure we all got connected to what is been, you know, uh, been uh, in, in the state of GTG Marjana. So thank you so much for this session. Um, and everybody have a great day. And we meet tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.